I began my last video and first one of this series by mentioning that, as a back-end developer, I've been distant from front-end technologies for a long time since I was at university playing with HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript. And since I joined a project recently where I would have to work with Vue.js, I decided it was the perfect time to reconnect myself with front-end and understand what I've missed during all these years and how to get back in track with it. In the first video, I navigated through some common but not known to many back-end developers concepts of modern front-end development, such as declarative rendering, reactivity, web components and single-page applications. Besides that, I also went through how to get started with Vue.js by initializing and running a project. And now that I have a project up and running, it's the perfect time to start building my first page. So in this video, we will find out together how we can build our first page in Vue.js. Let's get started. The idea for this page is not mine. In fact, I attended the JavaScript meetup last week in Eindhoven, where Nikola Mitrovic was talking about web APIs. Something new for me too. Nevertheless, the example he created were based on a NASA's API that allows us to query all exoplanets identified so far. I found it brilliant and a great API to play around. So for the first page, let's create a list of planets and an interface that allows us to filter them. But before we get there, let's not forget about the fundamentals of Vue.js and cover what API styles means in this framework. API styles. The term API styles refers to different ways you can define and work with components within the framework. Think of components as any reusable part of your website, such as a list or a button, for example. As of view 3, there are two primary API styles, the Options API and the Composition API. It is important that we understand both styles and choose one to follow along within our project. Here is a breakdown of what each one means. Options API. The Options API is the classic way to define components in Vue.js. You organize your components' options, such as data, methods, computed, etc., into an object. This API is very structured and often considered more beginner-friendly. Let's take a look at an example. As you can see, in the Options API, we organize our code by options like data for reactive properties and methods for functions. Composition API. Introduced in Vue 3, it provides a more flexible way to define and reuse component logic. It's particularly useful for managing complex components as it allows you to organize code by feature rather than by option type. Use functions like ref within the setup method to define reactive properties. Let's also take a look at one example. In the Composition API, instead of using methods like methods and data, we utilize the setup function where we can use reactive references using the ref library and compose our component logic in a more JavaScript-like manner. The term API styles in Vue.js refers to these two different approaches to defining components. Both the Options API and Composition API allow you to achieve the same functionality but offer different ways to organize and structure your code. Options API is more structured and often considered more beginner-friendly, while the Composition API is more flexible and particularly useful for complex components or code reuse. You can choose the API style that best fits your project's needs, coding style, or specific use cases. But from what I've learned from colleagues and this meetup I attended last week, Composition API is the one you should be aiming at at this point. So without further ado, let's build our first page right now. Building the page. The first page is going to be simple. We will have a scrollable list of cards where each card will hold information such as the planet's name, the year of discovery, and the distance from Earth. Besides that, on the top, we will have the title of the website and a search bar that will allow us to search for specific planet names. Step 1. Clearing the project. Let's start by deleting everything inside the components directory and the logo.spg file in the assets directory. Besides that, let's refactor the app.view file and clean it up as well.
Let's also clean up main.css since you won't need all these styles that come up with the sample project. And then let's move to step 2, defining the planet type. Let's define a planet type. This type will hold the information for each one of our planets. First, create a file types.ts under source. Then, let's implement the planet type with three properties name, discovery year, and light years away. And then let's move on to step 3 create a planet card component. We need a card component that will be used for displaying each planet card in our list. To do it, let's create a new file called planetcard.view inside of the components directory. Then let's implement the template. This section defines the HTML structure of the card and it uses views template syntax to bind data to the HTML. Inside the template, we will define a div whose class is card. This is a container that wraps the content of the card. And then inside this div, we will have a header that will hold the planet's name and then two paragraphs, one with the discovery year and another one with light years away. Now, let's define the JavaScript's content of this component. First of all, since we're using TypeScript, we need to mark our script block with that information. In the first line, we import the define component function from view, which provides better type inference when using TypeScript. Then, in the second line, we import the planet type that we defined earlier in this video. Yo. Then, we implement the define component, and this is basically saying, hey, I'm creating a new piece to add to our website, and I'll be using some rules from the Vue.js framework to make it. Inside the define component, we will define props, which is a way of saying that whenever this piece is used, some properties may be provided. This piece specifically asks for the information about a planet, which as you see, is required. So, to sum it up, this code is creating a new piece for a website and says, if you want to use me, give me information about a planet and make sure it has all the details I expect. Now, let's move on to step 4, defining the data. In this video, we're not going to connect our project to NASA's API, but instead, we will mock the data. The place where we will define our data is in our main component, app.view. So let's get started by importing some tools from Vue. We will need define component and ref. Then once again, let's import the blueprint for what the planet type looks like. Notice the keyword type after import here. Now, let's export our default define component. This part is saying I'm creating a new website piece using Vue.js rules. The setup block is where the component sets up its initial state or behavior. It's like the started kit for the component. Inside the setup, we will create a box called a ref in Vue.js terms that holds a list of planets. Each planet has a name, a discovery year, and its distance from Earth. A few example planets are added to start with. And finally, we return the box, which means we're done setting up and that we can use whatever we return in the rest of the component. Now that our data is ready, we can move on to Step 5. Use the card component in the main component. Still in app.view component script block, let's import the planet card. Then, we must tell our main component that we will be using the planet card component and we do it in the components parameter. Now, let's implement the template block. We will define a div element, and inside this element, we will define the planet card element. Here, we're going to use the v4 directive. Directives are prefixed with v- to indicate that they are special attributes provided by Vue, and as you may have guessed, they apply special reactive behavior to the rendered DOM. In this case, we're iterating over a variable, but there are other directives such as vbind, von, and vif. If we run our application right now, we'll see our data. However, there is no style yet, so let's go back and style the planet card component. Let's go to planetcard.view and implement the style block. 
Here, we will start by defining some CSS for the card class. Any element that is labeled as card will have a blue background color. The text inside this element will be white. The corner of this element will be rounded with a radius of 10 pixels. There will be a little space of 16 pixels around the inside edge of the card, so the text or content inside doesn't stick to the edges, and the card will have a width of 100 pixels. Then, we're saying that if there is an H2 element inside of the card, it should have a font size of 18 pixels. And if there are paragraphs, they should have a font size of 14 pixels. Now, going back to our browser, we can see that our cards are now styled and looking cool. Now, we need to style our main component as well. So let's move back to app.view and implement the style block. Here, we're going to say that the background color of the body will be a shade of gray-blue. Then, we're saying that the elements inside of the body will follow a flexible box. This allows easier alignment and distribution of items. Then, we will define a class card container which will use the grid layout. We also say that this container will take 100% of the width of its parent element, and that the grid will be divided into four equal width columns. One, fee, one FR stands for one fraction of the available space. It means that each column takes one fourth of the total space. And finally, we say that the space between each chord should be of 16 pixels. Now let's update our template and tell our div it should follow the card container class. If we return to our website, we should see the cards beautifully styled at this point. Pretty good, right? But we're not done yet. I want to add custom fonts. I want to use the Montserrat font, which was released through Google Fonts and has become widely popular for its modern and geometric design. Let's see how we can do it. To use the Montserrat font in our view application, we will need to include in our project. To include it, let's open the index.html file and include it as a link inside our head element. Then, let's go back to app.view and refactor our style block. We are telling that everything inside the body should now use the Montserrat font. Now, let's go back to our website to see the results. Pretty good, at least for a back-end developer it looks pretty good. Now let's work on the top bar. Let's start by refactoring the template block on app.view. Here, before our card container, we want to define a top bar container. Inside of this container, we will define two elements, the title of the website and the search bar. We also need to refactor our style block and add the top bar and the search bar elements. For the top bar, we will also use the flexible box layout. Then, we will align the children elements in such a way that there is an even space across the main axis. We also want these elements to be centered, and that's why we define the Align Items property. After that, we are saying that we want 16 pixels of space on all sides inside the top bar, giving some space to its content. And finally, we're saying that we want the top bar to take 100% of the width of its parent element. Cool. Let's now work on our search bar class. Here, we're saying that the space bar will take half of the width of its parent element. Then, we will remove any border that this element may have by default. And finally, we're gonna round up the corners with a radius of 20 pixels and add a space of 8 pixels vertically and 16 pixels horizontally inside the search bar. Now, we remove the default outline that appears when the element is clicked. Going back to our website, we will see that it's looking beautiful, at least for me it is. But unfortunately, the search bar doesn't work yet. So let's see how we can filter planets based on user input. Remember that in the beginning of this video, we talked about the ref library. This is the section where I'm going to explain why we need it. But before, let's make a plan to make our website dynamic. We will follow these steps. First, we need state management. That's why we need ref. And we will add a new ref variable to hold the search value and a computed variable to filter the planets based on the query. Second, we need to bind the search bar's value to the search bar property we defined in the first step. For this, we will use the vModel directive. 
And finally, to display only the filtered planets, we'll use the variable we created in the first step in the v4 loop to display only the planets that match the search query. And to make graph simple to understand, let's break down its concept. Creating a variable. Think of graph as a way to create a special variable that view can watch. When you change the value of this variable, view knows about it. Reactivity. Imagine that this special variable is connected to ports of your web page. When the variable changes, those ports of the web page automatically update to reflect the new value. You don't have to tell the web page to update itself. It just knows it has to do it. And accessing and changing the value. You can look at the value of this special variable and change it just like any other variable. The only difference is that you use dot value to get or set the value. Now that we understood how ref works, let's get it to work by refactoring the script block on app.view. We will define a new ref for the search query. Then, we will define a new computed property that will filter the planets based on search query. And now, we return both the filtered planets and the search query, allowing both to be used by the rest of the component. Now that we have our refs defined, let's see how we can use them in our template block. In our search bar, we will define the vModal directive, which is basically saying that the content of this element is bound to search query variable. They should be the same. And for the planet cards, we will only update the variable we are iterating using the v4 directive. To test it, let's add a bunch of fictional planets to see if everything is working as expected. So let's go to our browser to check it out. Let's make a couple of searches. We can see that everything is working as expected. It even matches multiple cards in case the text is within their name. Like when we search for app, we find both kappa and kapo. It's working like a charm. But let's not stop here. In my next video, I want to find out how I can integrate my Vue.js application with NASA's API so that we don't need to use fictional planets anymore. My name is Rafael Deliu, and stay tuned.